Our class has started adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators, denominators that are different. To do this, we learned that we need to find a common denominator, and our students have learned two strategies in order to do this. I'm going to show you both of those now. The first one is to find equivalent fractions by skip counting. This is a method we learned in our last unit on fraction number sense to make new fractions that were equivalent. So here's how we start. I always start with the fraction with the smallest denominator, and I mark out five equivalent fractions that I'm going to make. Then I skip count using both the numerator and denominator. So for the denominator, I'm counting by sixes. So I have 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. And in the numerator, I'm skip counting by ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I've made a list of five equivalent fractions with different denominators, and I'm going to do the same at the top and try and find a denominator that is the same as one of my fractions on the bottom. So skip counting by eights. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, and skip counting by fours. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, and 24. After I've done this, I'm going to check them out and find a common denominator. And I see from going across my rows that I have a common denominator in 24 and 24. So I'm going to use these fractions and add them together. So my new problem is 12 24 plus 4 24 my denominator stays the same, and I add the numerator. 12 plus 4 is 16. Now this step is where we need to check and see if we reduce or simplify our fraction. So we'll re review that quickly as well. When we reduce or simplify a fraction, we first find the GCF using our follow the rainbow strategy by writing out our factors. So for 16, I have 1 and 16, 2, and 8, 4, and 4. For 24, I have 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. Then I go through and find my greatest common factor, the biggest factor that they share. So there's no 24 on top, there's no 12 on top but there is an 8 on both the numerator and denominator. That tells me that both 16 and 24 can be divided by 8. If I follow the rainbow, I can find the fact that I need to use. 16 divided by 8 gives me 2. And 24 divided by 8 gives me 3. My reduced fraction is 2 thirds. The other method uses least common multiple. So I'm going to put a different fraction up for that one. Let's do it with 9 twelfths and subtracting 1 third. In this method, we use LCM, which we've already learned in class. So I'm going to take my denominators, 12 and 3, and find the least common multiple, the least common multiple that they share. So 3. 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, and then I go down 5 on the other side. 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72. Then I mark off and find which number they share and have in common that's the smallest. So I can start on one side and look for 12 over here. Oh, and I got lucky. It's the first number I checked. 12 is my least common multiple, which means that they can both have a denominator of 12. So I make my new denominator. Now this one already has 12 as the denominator, so I don't need to change anything with that fraction. It stays the same. In this fraction, I have to figure out what my numerator is going to be to make one-third equivalent to a fraction in twelfths. So I can figure out, okay, 3 times what is going to give me 12? I know that 3 times 4 is 12. 
And whatever I multiplied the denominator by, I have to multiply the numerator by. So I multiplied 3 by 4. Now I'm going to multiply 1 times 4. My new fraction for 1 third is 4 twelfths. They have a common denominator, and now I can subtract. 9 twelfths minus 4 twelfths gives me 5 twelfths. As always, I double check to see if I can reduce the fraction by writing out all my facts. This is a great way to study your multiplication facts as well. And then seeing what the GCF is. In this one, my greatest common factor is 1, so I know that 5 twelfths is in simplest form, and it's already reduced. My final answer for 9 twelfths minus 1 third is 5 twelfths.